I often get asked the question of whether you should choose Docker or Kubernetes. I think there's a little misunderstanding about that. What is Docker? What is Kubernetes? My name is Ibrahima. In this video, I'm going to clarify the idea that you have to use one or the other. As an example, let's say you have existing Docker containers and workload and you want to solve some complex issues you have when trying to scale. To better answer this question, let's start with a native cloud application and let's say we have a front end that is written in React, supported by Node.js, database access to a Java application and to access external APIs, we can use a Python application with Flask which allows us to serve REST endpoints. If I put a hat as a Docker Ops engineer, using a pure Docker approach to deploying application, I will be moving it to a server start. As discussed in the virtual machine and Docker video that you can find in the description down below, each server stack is made up of hardware's operating system and the Docker daemon installed on the operating system. This allows us to create containers. Docker provides us with a number of tools to work with our containerized applications. I'll come back in more details in the purely Docker tutorial. So once we've taken those applications to create new containers, we'll use a number of Docker commands to run our containers. So let's see what that would look like. We have our JavaScript application, our Java application, as well as the Python application. And we're also going to be scaling them individually to take advantage of all the resources we have. We can do this as many times as we want, but suppose we extend them three times for now in order to efficiently use all the resources at our disposal. So using Docker and Docker tools, simple deployment is very easy. But let's imagine that our application start to have a lot more load, that more people are accessing it, and we realize that we have to evolve to be able to offer a better user experience. So as an ops engineer, my first instinct might be that I already have script to create this stack. Let's just get a new server and do the exact same deployment multiple times. This happens often in many companies, increasing memory, CPUs, storage, and so on. For many reasons, this can quickly fall apart when you start to scale. For example, what if your developer's team needs to create a new microservice to support a new business requirement? Where can we integrate them? Especially if you already have efficient use of your service. Also, one of the great advantages of microservice-based applications is being able to extend each component individually. So this is another thing that the operation team should write scripts for and find the most efficient way to change things in response to overload. To identify and resolve user experience issues during scaling is where an orchestration tool comes in, something like Kubernetes, which allows you to use your existing applications in Docker to orchestrate them and use your servers and space more efficiently. In short, the architecture of Kubernetes is made up of a master node. This node is connected to other nodes, called worker nodes. The master node manages the hosting of our applications, i.e. Docker containers. It manages how to put them together and orchestrate them, start, stop, update, this sort of thing. I would say that Kubernetes offers three major advantages, facilitating deployment, facilitating development, providing monitoring tools. The first step will be the deployment. So let's go back to our application architecture. Say we want to deploy this React application 10 times, or we want 10 instances. We expect to consume about 128 megabytes for each instance. We could specify other parameters, rules like when to reboot, that sort of thing. The packaging of all this allows us to get a Kubernetes deployment. A Kubernetes deployment is therefore not a one-off operation, but it's something that grows, lives, and breathes with the application and the full stack. For example, if the React application crashes, Kubernetes will automatically restart it to revert to the state we identify when creating this deployment. So the deployment is still growing and still lives with the application. So I think we can actually say that it made deployment, in addition to scaling, easier. Let's talk about development. You might be wondering, once we've created the deployment for each of those individual services and scale them, we'll have a lot of microservices with different endpoints. For example, if our frontend needs to access the database, we need to talk to one of them so that our request is executed, right? So for each of them, Kubernetes will create a service. We can just label service A, B, and C. Those applications can now talk to each other just by using the service names shown in Kubernetes. For this, Kubernetes deploys node balancers, 
for all the microservices that we have scaled. In addition, it takes advantage of the service registry and discovery capability to allow our application to communicate with each other using those Kubernetes services. So basically, we can say that Kubernetes make development easier. And the last thing I want to touch on is monitoring. Kubernetes uh, has a lot of built-in features for you to see logs, CPU loads for, from the UI. But sometimes you, you want to know more about your application. For this, a number of tools to give you some insight into your running application have been developed by the open source community. There's also Docker Swarm, which allows you to manage the orchestration of Docker containers. Like Kubernetes, Swarm provides many tools for scaling, networking, securing, and maintaining the, your containerized applications, as well as beyond the capability of the containers themselves. Coming back to our main topic, I believe you already understood that between Kubernetes and Docker, it's certainly not a choice to use one or the other. This is one of those things where Kubernetes allows you to leverage your existing Docker workloads and manage them to at scale so you can tackle real complexity. Even if you are building a small application, Kubernetes is a great place to start if you anticipate that someday you will need to scale. If you are already taking advantage of Docker and containers with your application, moving them to Kubernetes can really help you deal with some operation costs that almost any application we encounter when trying to scale. This is what I wanted to cover today. I hope that gives you a clear idea on how to use those technology. If you find this video valuable, please subscribe and like to support the channel.